it's Plumber Tom. Don't forget to check in the comments below for a link where you can find additional resources like practice tests and courses you can take. Your support helps me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hey, let's talk for a few minutes about groundwater sumps. The purpose of a groundwater sump is to make sure that the water that rises from below ground does not ever flood or damage the inside of the house. Now this is most common in houses that have basements. And if you have a basement, it's not a matter of if, but when you will probably have a flood. There's a lot of reasons that flood can happen, but basements are often put into areas where there is the potential for the water in the ground at certain times of the year to rise up. Water collects in the ground and it moves through the ground like streams below dirt that you can't even see. It also collects in enormous lakes below ground called aquifers. But this groundwater can rise right up to the surface. And if your house is below the surface, you may be getting that water inside your house. So the purpose of a groundwater sump including a pump, is to take that water as it comes and pump it away from the house so that you can keep the inside of the house dry. At certain times of the year or in some places all year, you're going to have to be pumping that water just to keep the inside from being damaged. Now there are certain components that go into a groundwater sump system. First of all, you're going to need a sump. A sump is basically just a pit, a hole in the floor and to protect that hole from filling with mud or dirt or whatever, a sump is often going to have a tank that's dropped down into there. Now this is similar to a sewage ejector where you have a sump and it's pushed down into the ground. It collects the waste and pumps it out. In this case, we're gonna to wanna to collect the water from the ground. So the tank itself should actually have holes in it so that the water from the ground can flow into the tank. Now the purpose of having the tank, rather than just dropping a pump down in a hole in the ground, is that the pump would get clogged with mud or rocks or other debris if it's sucking constantly that water from the ground. Whereas when the pump is set inside of a sump, that will protect the pump, allow the water to collect within the sump tank, and then the pump can lift it out. So it's important that the sump tank or pit that's put into that hole in the floor actually have holes in it so the water from the ground can seep into that and then the pump can lift it out. The pump, as mentioned, is set down into that tank below the floor and of course its purpose is to lift the water out as it comes. Now if there's a constant stream of water from below ground, that pump may be going on and pushing quite a bit. So that's where it's important to make sure that the pump has a proper capacity, that it can lift enough water that it's not going to be running all the time. Pumps have an actuator that's going to turn the pump on and off. Pumps are submersible, so they can be below water. Most actuators use a float device, and as that float lifts up with the rising water in the sump, the pump kicks on, pumps the water out, the float will drop down, and then the pump will turn off. A pump that's running all the time will likely burn out. To keep the pump from burning out, we also install a check valve in the pipe that lifts the water away from the pump. The check valve keeps water that has already been pumped up a vertical piece of pipe from coming back down into the sump after the pump shuts off. So the check valve stops and holds that water above and that helps to minimize wear on the pump. But those check valves do wear out. So a ball valve or a shutoff valve, full open that can allow the full volume of that pumped water through is installed above the check valve. That ball valve is mainly just for maintenance purposes. If we ever need to replace the pump or the check valve, we can turn off the ball valve, have control of the water above in that riser, and do whatever we need to to service the system below without being flooded by the water that's up above. From the pump, we're going to use piping to convey the water from the inside of the building to the outside of the building. It's important that that piping is big enough to hold the volume of the pump. A simple rule of thumb is that you want the piping to be as least as big in diameter as the outlet from the pump. So if it's an inch and a quarter threaded hole that you connect to on the pump, 
You should run inch and a quarter pipe to give it plenty of open space. But there are other restrictions that can happen. If you run that pipe a long distance, there's friction on the pipe itself, or especially if the water is passing through a series of elbows, changing directions to get out where it needs to go. That would also create some flow restriction, in which case it's helpful to have larger pipe sizes to keep from stressing out the pump. The pipe lifting the water is going to go outside of the building and allow that water to flow away from the building. That may also require some additional work on the outside. After penetrating the side of the house or building, we may need to get a hose or some tubing or additional piping on the outside to convey that water away from the house far enough so that we're not just pumping the water out of the house and then it seeps down in the ground back in and then pumping it out again and cycling in a way that we don't need to. So it's important to get that water away from the house where it can seep into the ground and not come back into the house. When it comes to the sump itself, you can purchase a manufactured sump tank that you sink down into the ground. And when I say sink into the ground, you're gonna have to dig a hole deep enough, wide enough, big enough for that to be recessed into the floor. Another simple affordable way to create a sump is to take a five gallon bucket and drill a whole bunch of holes in it and set that down into the floor. Now, technically, that bucket is not large enough to qualify for a groundwater sump according to code, where they require 18 inch diameter and 24 inch depth. A five gallon bucket is a little bit smaller than that. A five gallon bucket is big enough to handle most of the pumps that would be used for a groundwater sump. And so this is one option. However, if you're trying to meet code requirements, you'll need something a little bit bigger. One disadvantage to using a five gallon bucket is that it may short cycle the pump, meaning the pump's coming on and off too frequently. The volume of that bucket is fairly small, so it can pump it out quickly and then shut off and then turn back on and shut off. Uh, one fix for that may be to put a lot of holes in the bucket so water can freely flow into it, um, hopefully without bringing in too much dirt or debris. Groundwater sumps are not required to have a covered or sealed sump, like a sewage ejector. Obviously with sewage, you want to keep the smell and all that awfulness down and sealed out of your living space. In this case, that's not really the case. It's you're just dealing with water in the floor. But it's a good idea to have a cover for that if possible so that things don't fall in the sump. At the same time, you want to be able to look into that sump and monitor water levels without getting too involved opening it up. So keep that in mind. Groundwater sumps come in a variety of sizes. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to check on is the horsepower capacity. How much can this pump handle? And you wanna know gallons per minute. If you're in a place where you're expecting a lot of water, like that groundwater can just really flow in at a high rate, you're gonna want a bigger pump, higher horsepower, larger output. If this is just for a backup or just in case, uh, an emergency sump, you can go with the smaller size pumps and pipe sizes and be okay. Speaking of pipe, most of the time we run PVC Schedule 40 pipe for a sump system like this. You can use other types of pipe. Galvanized is approved, but that's gonna be expensive. Typical DWV pipe should probably be avoided because its cellular core and it's not made for pressure. When you hook this up to a pump, it's going to be pushing with some pressure. And so, you know, you should use the Schedule 40 PVC pipe with a solid wall, which can handle at least the pressure. Now, a pump's not gonna create a huge amount of pressure, but these pipes will be under pressure, and it's important to have piping that can handle that. Furthermore, the pump is gonna create some vibration on the pipe, and that can cause some stress points. We have to consider the fact that sumps require electricity, and if the power is out, then so is the pump. And it's a good idea to consider backup system if the possibility of flooding is very high and you're worried about power going out. It's a good idea to install some sort of battery or power backup for the sump. Also, if you're dealing with high volumes of groundwater, there is the possibility that the pump will fail. And if the pump fails, then you're just back to the same situation where you're flooding. So in those situations, some people will install two pumps, a backup pump. So if the first pump fails, the second can handle the water while the first is being repaired. And that way you're never in a situation where it's gonna flood out of control. In any case, a groundwater sump should be monitored 
Whenever there's high groundwater or circumstances that that flooding can happen, it should be checked near daily just to make sure that the pump is working as it should and that the groundwater is not rising faster than the pump can handle to avoid serious damage from floods. There are also options for alarms or alerts that would indicate if the pump has failed or if there's water reaching the surface. So where there is a lot of concern that the groundwater can come in high volumes or concern that the pump would fail, there are some options to alert the occupant of the building if that has failed or has a problem. This video is intended to give a basic understanding of groundwater sumps for specifics on code requirements, make sure to look at the International Plumbing Code, section 1113. Once you've installed a system, make sure that you take the time to test that. If there's not groundwater present, you can run a hose into the sump and just fill it with water, let it run, and make sure that the pump turns on and off as it should, and that the discharge pipe isn't leaking, and that it can handle the movement of that water in the future. Good luck as you install groundwater sumps.